Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Friday, August 29th, 7.45 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. A new hypercarnivore that used to eat dinosaurs has been discovered. And we've got a new high-resolution geologic map. It's interactive for the entire U.S. So you can, well, get the answers you're looking for. We also have spiders keeping fireflies as glowing prisoners to draw more prey. A lot to talk about, so buckle up and keep calm. It's boom time. A rare summer rain hits San Diego from the remnants of Tropical Storm Juliet. Rain was contained to the southern portions of the county, but northern portions of the county could also see some scattered showers. This is good news for a very parched west coast. The seven-day graphical tropical outlook from the National Hurricane Center shows just one disturbance with a 30% chance of cyclone formation in the next week. There are no signs of it approaching the east coast of the U.S. whatsoever on the models. And now the full forecast. We've got a flooding threat along the Gulf Coast, Southern Rockies, and High Plains. Cooler weather in the central and eastern U.S. as well. Fall-like temperatures all the way across North America. Strong thunderstorms may bring excessive rainfall and flooding over parts of the northern Gulf Coast today and over parts of the southern Rockies into the high plains today through the weekend. You can see some of the warnings out here. A refreshingly cool and dry air mass will produce below average temperatures across the central and eastern U.S. through the weekend. And we'll get to those models right now. So first, we'll take a look at the GFS model and we'll walk it through for any severe weather threats. Here's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But most importantly, let's take a look at the temperature anomaly and the thermodynamics. You can see that cold blob dipping down here. Here we are, Friday, August 29th. Overnight, take a look at the chill. Holy macaroni. Many of these areas, 12 to 16 degrees below normal. And Saturday, Sunday, you can see that cool air anywhere in blue and purple is well below normal. Here is Sunday night into Monday and Monday night into Tuesday. And you can see the cold persists for much of the U.S. Wednesday and another cold blob moving down in the first week of September. This one's pretty major. It's going to bring a major cool down at least 20 degrees below normal there in Canada. Take a look at that. And September 4th, Thursday here, September 5th. And that cold blob moves east like a beast. Holy macaroni. Let's take a look at total accumulated precipitation and see that all these western wildfires are going to get a good dousing. As soon as we hit September here, more precipitation for the west, which is going to tamp down that wildfire smoke we've been dealing with all summer. And we did talk about the wildfire smoke on, quite frankly, just the other day. And we'll, we're going to get to the uh, announcement in just a moment. Seismic update. No quakes of note. The Camp Chocta continues to rumble in a big way. Qu uh, aftershocks of 5.2 and 5.1 kicking off there. In the U.S., the biggest quake is a 3.5 in Valmy, Nevada. Overall, very low-level seismic activity worldwide. And that brings us to Worldwide Volcano News. Uh, and this site is still janky. Uh, but we will read off a few of the erupting volcanoes today, including including Liotolo to 6,000 feet, Fuego to 14,000 feet, Ibu to 6,000 feet, Nevada de Ruiz, volcanic ash emissions reported, Shishaldin unrest continues there, Popo to 23,000 feet, Semadu, who knew, now you do 15,000 foot blast there, Liotolo to 9,000, Santiguito to 14,000 feet, Liotolo to 6,000, and Etna, multiple lava flows continuing over there. Uh, Kirishima, 7,000 foot puff. Sun Gay to 19,000 feet. Raventador, 14,000 foot blast. Sukurajima to 7,000 foot today. And wrapping up the list is Swanasima to 7,000. And bringing us to space weather. Flaring activity is cooling down, but sunspots are directly facing us. So what's going on? Well, Earth facing quiet is king. We do have a new active region that was flaring earlier today. Uh, and it's just turning around the limb. So the latest HMI intensity shows not a very big spot. And I'm sure when it faces Earth, it's going to go quiet. Three-day geomagnetic forecast is all quiet. Flaring is dying down. 
And, and that was the activity over the limb from that tiny sunspot. Let's talk about getting pregnant in space. Well, the dream quickly turns into a scientific nightmare. Cosmic rays, zero G, and other problems probably mean we will not have a colony on Mars anytime soon. In fact, I think the populating of Mars is a death mission. More evidence is piling up. Links will be below. Spiders are seen keeping fireflies as glowing prisoners that draw more prey to their webs due to the light overnight. The fireflies are kept inside the webs for as long as they glow before they get eaten. Absolutely amazing. Mother Nature. The USGS unveils a new national geologic map. This hasn't really been updated. This is fantastic news. It's a significant advancement for geosciences. The U.S. Geological Survey has released the most detailed national scale geologic map of the country to date, offering unique regional views of geology at and beneath the Earth's surface. It's dubbed the Cooperative National Geologic Map, and we will leave you links below to it. It is amazing. Take a look at the geologic map of Colorado here. Uh, and how interactive it is. Absolutely fantastic. Tells you uh, the time period of the rocks you're looking at. So if you know where you're driving and you see an outcrop, you can immediately date it and read a little bit about the morphology or what type of rock it is. This is absolutely groundbreaking for new geology students as well as geology enthusiasts like many people that watch the channel. A 70 million year old hypercarnivore that ate dinosaurs has been named after an Egyptian god. Researchers have unveiled Cotensuchus astrox, a giant crocodile relative that ate dinosaurs in Argentina 70 million years ago during the Cretaceous. This baby was up to 13 feet long and well, thank God, I wasn't alive back then, or maybe I was. I, I don't know. I do believe in reincarnation. I certainly want to, don't want to reincarnate in a time when these animals are roaming around eating dinosaurs. Down and dirty, how regenerative farming is digging into microscopic soil life. Well, we've been promoting BEAM, the biologically perfect compost that was developed uh, in New Mexico, maybe uh, almost a decade ago. It is called the Johnson Sioux Bioreactor, and it creates this biologically complete compost with all the beneficial bacteria and all the beneficial fungi. And you just need a tiny little bit to inoculate your land and increase yields fivefold. You don't need all these harmful chemical inputs that modern ag uses. And I didn't think there was any chance we could break away from the pharmaceutical industrial complex agriculture that we're using. But apparently, there is a huge push to this type of natural farming. Nurturing everything from bacteria and fungi to worms is essential to help minimize the use of chemicals, machinery, and pesticides. And well, it seems as if the industry is moving towards that, and I couldn't be uh, more than the biggest fan. What say you? Leave a comment below. And join us in just a few minutes over at Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Rumble where we will have a premiere with a live chat of the interview with, quite frankly, it's over two hours. We talk about the Minnesota shooting. We talk about underground cities, deep underground military bases, uh, aliens, Neanderthal DNA, and all of us what evolution really means, and the fact that we're all aliens. It's an, it's an amazing show. Over 40,000 views in just the last two days. So please buckle up and join us over at Rumble on Oppenheimer Ranch Project for the expose. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hit the thumbs up. We are preparing for the next several weeks for the Crestone Energy Fair as it fast approaches in just over two weeks. Holy macaroni. We hope to see you all there. It's a three-day event. It is going to be the biggest Crestone Energy Fair ever. 
And if you've been saying this is your bucket list, well, get out here and shake our hand. We love each and every one of you. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Half of the people watching are unsubscribed. We're trying to get to 100,000 by the end of the year, and we need your help. So hit that button and be well. We love you.